Miss Hubby. Me find last week's newspaper down by spring. Well, it must be from that wagon train that camped here last week. Uh, but it have news a friend from Forgins Flat came, Miss Hubby. Listen. Honored Mr. and Mrs. All shirts washed free for one week start May 1st. So you come clean to Chinese wedding of Lee Po and Miss Marlin Soon. Lee Po? Him, our old friend, Kimasabi. Our good friend, Tunnel. So this is Lee's wedding day. Uh, 12 o'clock, right after stage, come in with bride from China. We can just make it. We'll take a shortcut over to the stage trail. Uh, we go to friend's wedding? Tunnel, I wouldn't miss it for the world. Let's put out the fire. Driver, get your hands up. All the way. Get outside and keep your hands up where I can see them. This is the end of line for you, China doll. Fellas are making a mistake. She's just a letter bride coming out here to get married. She's got no money. She don't even speak English. We got company, brother. Stage coach break down, Kimisami. Oh, hold up. Come on. Come on, make yourself comfortable, Dal. Let's go. That's for Furnace Creek. Choice tunnel. Them crazy men. They'll kill her for sure. Get back down that road where we can see you. All right, mister. I've taken you at your word. But if anything happens to that girl, I'll track you down if it's the last thing I ever do. Come on, let's get back to the cabin. the beginning, Tunnel. Kimasabi, why do you think them take Lee Poe's girl? That's what we're going to find out. It's what I think it is. It should be torn out by the roots. Come on. <laughs> what did that give me for, Lee Poe? Stage, she late today, but Lee Poe not jumpy. <laughs> oh, no, you're like a little on a <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? Are you afraid your mail order bride missed the boat? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe our folks forgot to tie a ticket on her. No ticket, no surety, huh? <laughs> <laughs> they not forget. I send ticket. She come long way just for me. Stagecoach, you're coming. Stand back, folks. It's up your prices, Lee. Here comes the bride. Hold her up, Shana boy. She's fashion. She's not here. Mr. Driver, where tiny girl? You know bling her? No, I bling her all right. A couple of road agents jumped me about 20 miles out of town. They took her. Hold up. That's right, Sheriff. What happened? They run off all your passengers? Well, no riding passengers up the China gal. And you let them take her without firing a shot? Well, my hands wasn't in shooting position. 
Besides, I'm not going to risk my neck for no... You mean for a Chinese girl? I mean what I mean. It's your sworn duty to protect your freight, and that includes human freight, no matter what the color of their skin is. Mr. Sheriff, she all alone. They kill her. I'm swearing in a posse right now, Lee. You go back to your laundry. We'll do everything we can. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sheriff. Too bad, Lee. Ain't it awful? Yeah, just awful. <laughs> Keep your head up, Lee Poe. Mr. Ranger. Hello, Lee. We're mighty sorry. My friends, what do you do here? We saw the holdup. Came as fast as we could. Why they do this to me? Well, I think I know, Lee. The lowest reason the human heart is capable of. Little boy, throw rock. Keep out of me. Catch him. No, Tom. Let him go. We don't want a lot of Chinese kids in camp. If you want to see your girl alive, get out of town pronto. Just what I thought, Lee. Children don't like Lee Poe. Throw stone. They don't know what they like except what they're told. Someone put that boy up to this. But why? Because their skin is a different color than yours. It's as simple as that. You see, Lee, children have no prejudice. I've seen them at play. Yellow, red, black, and white. They don't know there's any difference. They have to be taught prejudice by their elders, by people who can only feel big by making others feel small. I go. I go right away. Then maybe they let her go. That's just what you won't do, Lee. You can't run away from prejudice. You've got to fight it. It's the American way. And there are plenty of people in this town who will fight it with you. There they go, Lee. The decent people are on your side. You stay here. Keep your eyes and ears open. Write down the names of anyone who advises you to leave town for your own good. Just sit tight. You'll hear from us. Me sit tight. Me good American. Not smoke. The right tunnel. It's tar. Come on. Why you bring me here? Why you boil tar? What, what did Lipo do? You're starting a family, that's what. And pretty soon others just like you'll be doing the same thing. And before we know it, half the town will be wearing pigtails and working for rice money. You're hitting the trail, China boy, wearing a nice warm overcoat of tar and feathers. Wait here. Because we wouldn't want you to freeze in the mountains, understand? I don't understand. Keep your hands away from your guns. Leap home. Who are you and what are you doing in that mask? This mask is on the side of the law. What about yours? Look, mister, you're a white man, ain't you? What's that got to do with it? We're just teaching this China boy a lesson, that's all. We warned him to get out of town. You warned him? It's our town, ain't it? You don't even represent it. Just a gang of hoodlums who sneaked out at night to commit a cowardly crime. What's wrong with getting rid of a Chinaman anyway? I'll tell you what's wrong with it. Chinese are people. Human beings. They have the same right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness that you have. They were brought here to help build this country. They've done most of the dirty work that white men wouldn't even touch. They dug our ditches, washed our clothes, 
and they helped build the railroad that opened up this great country of ours to the settlers. Ah, uh, Chinese are rice eaters. They work for nothing. They take the bread out of white men's mouths. If you ask me, tar and feathers too good for them. Well, I am asking you. And you, and you. Tato, get our horses. Leap home. No drink coffee, Kimisami. You were very quiet. Something trouble you? I was just thinking how they'd like a new laundryman in Forgan's flat. But they don't want Chinese laundrymen. You're right, Lee. I wonder how they'd accept a Swede. That's good girl. <laughs> me yump and hear me knee. This knee, she sure go out of joint. I'm looking for a job. You need good laundry man in town? Sure do, sweet. Yeah, that's good, because old Swan here, he need job. You better see the sheriff. He put the key in the lock. His office is right up the street. Well, thanks, gents. Thanks. Howdy, mister. You Bane Sherry? Yep, I Bane. What can I do for you? I'm Sven Olsen. Darn good laundry man. Looking for a job. Oh, you are, are you? Well, I think you've come to the right place. Got any references? Yeah, yeah. Sven got good reference. A silver bullet? Only one man I know carries bullets cast from pure silver. That's right, Ike. <laughs> yeah, you old Svenska rascal, you. <laughs> what are you doing here and in that get-up? I'm looking for the men who stole Lee Poe's girl and ran him out of town. Oh, you got your work cut out for you, mister. I've been out with the posse, and we couldn't find hide in a hair of them. They're right here in town, Ike. And I think I know who they are. You do, eh? Got any proof? You just open that laundry up tomorrow, and I'll have your proof. You help Lee Poe get a fire started. Sheriff Kane has let the townspeople know that this place is open for business. We have got to be ready for it. This gate is for both doors, front and back. Good luck. Thanks, Ike. The first lead I get, I'll come straight to your office. Now listen carefully. I'm supposed to be here alone. When you hear the front door jingle, don't make a sound. Stand stock still. Me no, Kimisami. Me Billy quiet. Good, Lee. Your girl's life depends on it. Tunnel, you lock the back door. I'll take care of the front. Gents, by George, that bell ain't stopped ringing for two hours. Sven Olsen got plenty big job. Plenty of work here for a white man. Well, good. That yours fine. You got big wash. Yump and Jiminy. This shirt she sure dirty. Feels like tar. <sighs> Smells like tar, too. That's what it is. We got it all over us. Yeah, tar on the roof. Sven can't promise to get it out, but he'll just run over to store and get some naphtha. Good idea. That ought to take care of it. Yeah, yeah. The snee, she yosh like cat. When she's in, she's out, and when she's out, she's in. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sven here all alone. You fellas watch door. He'll be right back. Go ahead, sweet. Somebody's in there. Well, he said he was alone here. Lee Ho! That engine. Fairly nice. Thank you, Mr. Flyley. Ain't that the engine was with the masked man that broke up our tar party? That's him, all right. Where's your partner? I mean, not know. Don't lie to me. We got a score to settle with him. Tell us or we'll knock it out of you. Come on, Lippo.
the masked man. Where is he? Bring out the... This is your last chance, Indian. Where is he? He couldn't get napped this, so I brought Sheriff instead. Thanks. What is this? They're under arrest, all of you. What for? Abduction. Assault with intent to commit bodily harm. And anything else we can think of. Out. You can't prove anything on us. No. I can identify these shirts by the tar I slapped on them. You! That's right. And Lipo can identify them by his own Chinese laundry marks. Think you're smart. Much good it'll do you. He'll never see that bride of his again. Why not? Because I sent word not an hour ago to get rid of her, that's why. Why you do it, Mr. Foggin? Because I hate all dirty foreigners, that's why. Talk. Go on, do anything you want. I won't tell. Wait a minute, Forgan. We didn't figure out no murder. Shut up, Friday. Give me savvy. Maybe this one would like to talk. All right. All right, I'll tell where she is. What's the matter with Forgan? Is he crazy or something? He's just hipped on the subject of foreigners, that's all. But his money ain't crazy. You want it, you do the job. You don't, I take it back to him. Make up your mind. And I'll tell Forgan the job's good as done. All right. Hmm. It's a good thing you don't savvy English, China Dow. You'd be mighty unhappy along about now. I'll just keep talking to her real easy. You go out the front door, pick her off from the back. Now, what are you waiting for? You know I ain't never gunned down a woman, Ray. Look, we took his money. Look, she ain't even armed. You're getting kind of finicky in your old age, ain't you? All right, have it your own way. I'll just mosey up close to her where she can grab my gun. Then she'll be armed. All right, but keep talking to her. Bye, China Dow. Say something, baby, even if it's in your own lingo. In out, ching ching, Chinaman, chow chow chow. Something like that. I don't know whether she's gonna go for this, Ben. But if she don't, we're gonna have to take her for a walk along the cliff. Giving her every chance, Ben. Just the way you wanted it. Ain't even looking down. On purpose. So it's up to you, Ben. Watch your hand. And me, too. Stand back to back. I'll cover the front. We got him. Come in. Drop your guns. All clear, Tuttle. Pick up the guns. I'll never need them again where they're going. Sheriff, the Boone brothers. Good. I've already got Jenny Fisher in jail. Friley made a full confession. Lock him up. I only hope the rest of the town people profit by this experience. There's no room in this country for racial prejudice. It just doesn't belong. He must have it. What did he pour to? Old Chinese custom, Tuttle. Ni ho la ma, ni mo si la ma. Ho ho, mo si la. Go yen, tai di go hai bing go a. 
What's she saying, Lipo? She say, who is man in mask? I tell her. This is our good friend. Now he is your friend. His name is The Lone Ranger. You've been quiet a long time. Tano, I've been enjoying the country, thinking how lucky we are to be here. The great heritage just makes you realize how the poet felt when he wrote, I love thy rocks and rills, thy woods and templed hills. Drop your guns. <laughs> I said, drop him. What's this all about, mister? Just drop the guns and ride. You can get them back in two days from the Tallman City Post Office. I'll circle and get behind. <laughs> Sit down. What's the meaning of this, Mr. Dubs? Walter Dubs. Are you outlaws? No more than you are. This mask is on the side of the law and always will be. I'm the Lone Ranger. And this is my Indian friend, Tato. I've heard of you. I'm awful sorry, mister, for everything. But mostly, I'm sorry about Hannah's harp. Harp? Yes, yeah, the only thing that Hannah ever really wanted. Kind of a dream it was ever since she was a little girl, listening to her aunt play one. Uh, Hannah, your wife? Uh-huh, just the other day, I was watching her sitting in a chair and sewing, and thinking how beautiful she was, and how good a wife she'd always been to me. What you dreaming about, farmer? About the farmer's wife? How lucky he is to have her. You're lucky. Why, Walter, a man like you could have had any woman he wanted. I haven't given you much. Never wanted. Been fed and clothed and sheltered. And loved. Any woman on earth could want for more than that. That's how Hannah was. She made a man feel ten feet high. But for 15 years, I'd been saving. And now, with her birthday just two months off, I had enough to buy her her dream. But I didn't have no money to pay the freight. So I told Hannah I was going to drive to St. Louis on business. Things went fine until I'd gone about 200 miles and was getting near Tallman City. Hey! Hey, you wild Indians! There's a wagon train! Come on, let's attack! Sorry, pale face. We engines were just funnin'. Funnin'? You young good for nothing. Hey, and look what I found. You give that back. That's mine. Oh, don't be stupid. We found it, and we're going to keep it. 
Why don't you give the old geezer back his money, Wes? We don't need it no how. You're getting soft, hacker. He's gonna pay me for this. Nobody whips a tallman. All right, all of you, let's go. The drinks are on the old man. I had no gun, so all I could do was watch him ride off with the money for Hannah's heart. So you try to take our guns? Mr. Dubbs, this is something for the law to handle. I think we'd better ride in and have a talk with the sheriff. I guess I was kind of sudden, kind of childish too, but I tell you one thing for certain. I'm gonna get that money back one way or the other. And that's the way it was, Sheriff. Description's easy. It was Wes Tallman and a bunch of the Diamond T Punchers. Then let's get after him. Now, Mr. Dobbs, we don't want to cause any trouble over a little prank, do we? Prank? You mean robbery and assault, Sheriff. Now, see here. I can't accuse Reese Tallman's son of that just on this man's say-so. Sheriff, I knew Tallman owned this town, but I didn't know he owned you, too. Men have died for talk like that. Well, well where are they, Sheriff? Mr. Dobbs came here for justice. You're the law in this town. Your duty is clear. All right, all right. We'll ride out and see Tallman if that's what you want. It certainly is. Well, I want you to stay in town. Find out all you can about West Tallman, where he's been and what he's done today. You may do that, Commissioner. Wes is a little high-spirited, Sheriff. You know that. But he likes his fun. Sure, Mr. Tallman, I know. Maybe I've given him a little too much range since his mother died. But a man's like that with his only son. That don't settle a thing. No. No, of course not. Well, let me see now. Wagon's worth about $20. Suppose we call it 50 to settle things. Call it 300 Now, now, Mr. Dubs. I know I'm a rich man, but don't get greedy. Ten for the wagon, five for the produce, and 285 in cash, what he stole from me. My son doesn't steal. Mister, he stole my purse. You're a liar, Mr. Dubbs. But then maybe it's worth it to get rid you of You mean to keep that thieving son of yours out of jail? Easy, Dubbs. No. You talked about justice. Well, good. Let's have some justice. I'm going to have your son arrested. Get out, sod buster. Just a minute, Mr. Tallman. If he prefers charges, there's bound to be trouble. Sheriff? Get these trespassers off my ranch and tell them that, right or wrong, nobody puts a Tallman in jail. That true, Sheriff? Well, as long as Mr. Tallman pays Mr. Dubs, I see no For the reason. wagon. Not a cent more. Mr. Tallman, I think we'd better have a talk with your son. What about, Masked Man? About the money for Hannah's harp, you little thief. Me? <laughs> Look, Dad, I'll admit we were horsing around a little, but. Well, surely you don't believe no, this. Of course not. <laughs> Can't you see, Dad? He's just trying to bleed you a little bit. Liar, tell the truth. I'll tell the truth. Truth is that you're a grubby dirt farmer who never saw five dollars in your whole life. Liar! Liar! Get a hold of yourself, Dubs. You too, Tallman. Who do you think you are trying to take a law into your own hands? I'll show you who I am. If you're not off this ranch in five minutes, I'll have you roped and dragged off. Are you all right, son? He, he tried to kill me, Dad. You saw it, Wirt. I want this old buzzard thrown in jail on a charge of attempted murder. Come along, son. Murder? Murder. Now look here, Sheriff. Well, you saw it, too. He did try to kill Wes. Well, he drove me to it. He beat me up. He stole my money. He lied. This man is guilty of attempted murder. So is Tallman for trying to crack his skull with a gun. Now look here, mister. Reese Tallman swings a lot of weight around these parts. I'll have to take him in. Very well, Sheriff. I can't interfere with the law. But you can tell Reese Tallman for me. He'll never railroad this man to prison. I'm gonna kill him. You're going to stay right here until I can prove West Tallman's guilt. I'll get out, and when I do... Murder never solved anything. Now you listen to me. I'm your friend. 
You said there was one man who objected to West Tarman taking your money. Did you hear his name? Hacker. He called him Hacker. Now will you leave me alone? Sabi, restaurant man say West Talman leave town this morning, drunk and broke. And come back later with plenty of money. Good work, Tarman. That's not proof, that's hearsay. You can't buck Reese Talman without absolute proof. And yeah, we'll get that proof. We're going to talk to an eyewitness. Come on, Tarman. Hacker sent the line camp at Alkali Spring. That's 30 miles away. Ah, him sent far as possible. Me think was Talman afraid him tell truth. He's going to tell the truth, Talman. Come on. Pull up! All right, now throw out your guns. You're running a bad hunch, mister. It doesn't matter if we ride on. You're trespassing on Diamond Sea land. Now, the quickest way off is back the way you came. We ride north. No, Injun. You're wrong. You go back the way you came. Either in one piece or full of holes. No point getting ourselves killed over an old farmer. Let's do what he says. Uh, who care about old farmer? Now you're playing it smart. All right, now turn around and get moving. Now, Tonto. See that, mister? He missed. But I'll shoot your head off if you don't forget what you have in mind. You're not scare us, boy. We'll get Hacker and bring him back to testify against you. No, mister. You get on your horse and go back the way you came. And if I ever see you on Diamond T land again, sir, help me, I'll bury you on it. You'll see us. When you do, you'll be sorry you ever started anything you couldn't finish. <laughs> Your move. Hmm? Oh. Still thinking about your wife? We don't have no relatives. What's she gonna do without me? Who'll take care of her? It's all that West Tallman's fault. I'll kill him. Take it easy, Dubs. You'll get a fair trial. It's him that ought to be tried, not me. Stop rooting, Art. Want some coffee? Oh. Oh, I, I got something in my eye. Here, let me see. Huh. I don't see nothing. See this, can't you? Now take it easy, Dubs. Take it easy. Mister, get me out of here. He's escaped. Dubs escaped. He tricked me, stole my gun. Where key? On the desk. You know which way he went? North, but the sound of the horse's horse towards the Talman Ranch. He's got a rifle with her. I gotta warn Reese Talman the old man's gunning for his son. You tell him that, he'll have 50 riders out to gun the old man down in his tracks. It's my duty to warn him. Open the cell. What do we do, Mr. Sammy? We've got to find Dubs before Tarman finds him, or before he finds Tarman. Either way, it'll be cold-blooded murder. Come on, Tarman. Here, 
him or something. Go up trail. There's a lot of hoof prints here. Well, that wagon horse wear big shoes and plenty heavy and slow, too. We catch up pretty soon. Dubs is armed and desperate. If we want to save his life, we have to trick him into giving himself up. I'll explain it to you as we ride. Dubs! It's me, the Ranger. Stay where you are. I've come to help you. You're on Talman's land. They'll cut us both down if they find us. Get back. <laughs> Listen, you hear that? Oh, no. You tricked me. I had to, Dubs. By now, the whole Talman outfit is gunning for you. What's the use? There ain't no justice, and I'm getting too old to fight. You're fighting it the wrong way. And you give up wrong way, too. There is such a thing as justice. We're going to get it for you. But not at point of gun. All right, take me back. Take me back. Good. That's what I wanted to hear you say. Tano, how long will it take you to ride to Alkali Springs and bring Hacker back? One day, him talk. He'll talk. That's why they sent him away. They're afraid he'll talk. Who cares? I don't. It's not for me. It's for Hannah. Poor Hannah. You not worry, mister. You not go to prison. And your Hannah, she get her harp yet. You see. The Indian cares. He really cares. Of course he does. All good men care when they see injustice done. We've waited long enough. Order. I now declare this court in session. Bring in the prisoner. Coming up, Your Honor. Just a minute, Judge. Give me one more hour. What difference can it make? You're out of order, mister. You said you'd have the witness here by sundown. All right, Dubs. You're charged with the vicious offense of felonious assault on the person of West Town. Now tell me, do you plead guilty or not guilty? Well, I... Oh, guilty, I guess. No, Dubs. You're innocent until proven guilty. One more word out of you and I'll hold you in contempt. The judge of this court, the power vested in me, I hereby sentence you to... I told you, Judge, my friend would be here. Ah, me bring witness. Him say, him see West Talman take money. You did, Hacker? I sure did, Judge. It's a lie. Hacker's a bare-faced liar. Am I? Take a look at his face. Ask him why he sent me into Alkali Springs when I told him I wouldn't lie for him. No, Dad. Don't believe him. Then why did you run away? Because it's true, Mr. Talman. True? Arrest him, Word. Stand back! No one arrested Talman. Uh, Talman. You young whelp! Don't move anyone. He'll shoot. Come on, Tonto. Now, boy, you catch yourself when you lie about Dubs. Think it over, son. You bought your own ticket to prison with the money you stole from Mr. Dubs. On your way. Oh, Walter, this is the most wonderful birthday surprise. I haven't had a birthday party since I was a little girl. Well, I reckon it's about time I fetched your present, Anna. Tonto?
present, too? Oh, I'm afraid he spoils me terrible sometimes. <laughs> he thinks I don't know. Betsy brought me back a fancy handkerchief from St. Louis. He never forgets me. Happy birthday, dear. Happy birthday, Hannah. Walter Dobbs. It's real, Hannah. It's real. Real? A real heart. Oh, Walter. I know it. I know she'd fall. <laughs> <laughs> From us, Hannah. Happy birthday. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look, there's writing in it. It says, Happy birthday, Hannah. From Tonto. And the Lone Ranger. I am Silver! Away! And I didn't realize it was a man of the cloth. Uh, well, forgive my intrusion, friend. Uh, I'm the Reverend Prospero. This is my daughter, Miranda. How do you do? We seem to be lost. Well, now, what can I do to help? Oh, that's very gracious, sir. Yes, gracious indeed. Uh, you see, we're on our way to my new pastor in Pine Valley, mm -hmm. and as I said, we seem to be lost. Uh, do you by any chance have a map of this territory? Yes, I do. Oh, but it's against company rules to allow strangers in after hours. Still, if I can't trust the parson, I reckon there's no one I can't trust. <laughs> Come on in. What's the idea of the... The idea is robbery, my friend. Now, if you'll be so kind. Open the safe. You're joking. A parson would never do a thing like this in front of his little daughter. You heard what the man said. Open the safe. disguised as little girl. What names do they use this time? Reverend Prospero and Dr. Miranda. Two characters from Shakespeare's play The Tempest. Them sound like same two people who pull other Wells Fargo holdups lately. Yes, and always in disguise and using Shakespearean names. My theory has to be right. There are two actors from this traveling company. But them go broke last month. Them all go back east. Apparently not all of them. Two of them must have stayed behind. And they're using their knowledge of makeup to pull these robberies. Then how we stop them if we not know what them look like? Each town they've held up has been due east of the town before it. As if they were working themselves back from where they came. Mm -hmm. Next town east of here is Cedar Springs. Uh, you're right. We better warn the Wells Fargo agent there that he may expect a visit from these two actors. Only this time we'll be there to greet them. Let's go. Sweetheart, you shall be the one to choose which one of these beers I shall wear for my little performance this afternoon. Whether it shall be this, of Petruchio, hmm? or uh, uh, this, of Otello, <laughs> or this, this of Shylock, huh? Or maybe I should go as Puck, just a bare-faced, innocent, apple-cheeked little one, huh? 
Oh, darling, whoever you go as, you'll still be the handsomest outlaw in the territory. Ah, uh, Juliet, how silver sweet sound lovers' tongues by night, as softest music upon attending ears. By the way, have you made up your mind what disguise you're going to wear? Time enough for that later. First, I must make sure I'll even need one today. What do you mean? When I noticed around this afternoon, I heard definitely there's going to be a $10,000 payroll arriving at 3 o'clock this afternoon. It won't hurt to double check. After three robberies, Wells Fargo may be throwing out false leads. Well, how do you find out? I'm a woman, darling, and women are much more resourceful than men. <laughs> I'll see you in an hour, honey child. Bye, you all. What the? Don't reach for your gun, Mr. Hollister. How'd you know my name? It's our business to find out all we can about people we have come to help. You ever seen one of these before? Silver. Yes. The company sent a report on you two once. A masked man and an Indian who've helped to protect Wells Fargo shipments. What are you doing here? We have reason to believe that this office is going to be held up by two outlaws who've been robbing the Wells Fargo offices. You expect shipment of money soon? Yes, this afternoon, as a matter of fact, three o'clock. But how would these outlaws find out about this? I don't know, Mr. Hollister. They're smart and ingenious. Only this time, if they come, we'll be waiting for them. Oh, it is true what I heard. It just can't be true. Masked. Are they the hold-up men? Now, take it easy, ma'am. What's troubling you? Well, who are they? Are they the robbers? You have nothing to fear from us, ma'am. That's right. They're friends of Wells Fargo. Come to help me protect our shipments. Then the rumor I just heard isn't true. What rumor was that? That the coach heading for this office was just held up. Everything on it stolen. Oh, my valuables. Oh. Whoever started that rumor is a liar, ma'am. I got a wire from Center City saying the coach left there just an hour ago. It'll be here at 3 o'clock, right on schedule. Oh, I'm so relieved to hear that. You must forgive me for getting so upset, but with all these holdups lately, it's hard not to believe the worst. I understand, ma'am. Now, don't you worry about a thing. You just go right on home. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you, gentlemen, too. I'll breathe a lot easier now. Poor woman. Half the town's been like that since this wave of robbery started. But she's the most hysterical one I've ever seen. Are you sure it was hysteria? What do you mean? She could be a skillful actress, trying to find out about the money shipment. By golly, I never thought of that. And I told her, too. What do you know about her? Very little. Ooh. She and her husband came to town a couple of days ago. Said there's honeymooners. Took the bridal suite over to the hotel. Uh, a front corner rooms on the second floor. I'd like to get a look at those rooms. If she is one of the robbers, I may find some evidence there. That's plenty dangerous, Kimitani. Maybe her husband there waiting for her now. I hope he is, Tonto. I'd like to have a talk with him. You go after her. Find some way to bring her back. I'll be fine way, Kimitani. Don't tell anyone that I suspect her. Just keep her here as long as you can. Fargo agent wants you to come back to office. What for? May think him have more news about stagecoach. You, you mean it has been delayed? May not know what message say. You come back to office. Yes, I, I think I'd better. The Indian told me you just had another message from the stagecoach. Message? What message? Me tell her how you send me after her. There may be delay. Uh, Delay. Oh, oh, the delay. Uh, yes, yes, there was another message. The coach may be a little late getting here. So I thought it would be smart if you gave me a list of the valuables you're expecting, so I could check them and see if they're all there. Oh, that won't be necessary. On the contrary, ma'am, I insist. If there's one thing the company takes pride in, it's protecting the valuables of its customers. Now, you tell me what you're expecting, piece by piece. 
Well, let me see now. Uh, there's my diamond ring, uh, a pearl necklace, Sonny will force me to use this gun. What is this? A holdup? I have nothing of value. Exactly what I'm here to find out. I don't understand. You'll find out soon enough. Now sit down. Just who are you? That is none of your business. I'm making it my business, mister. Now, what is your name? It's Horatio. Horatio Montague. Horatio Montague? Thanks for giving yourself away so quickly. What do you mean? Montague is Romeo's last name. Horatio was a character in Hamlet. Well, it's, it's just a coincidence. You're wrong. It fits the pattern set by the outlaws who held up the Wells Fargo office. They use Shakespearean names every time. Your name is Faversham, isn't it? Well, what if it is? That doesn't prove a thing. Not a thing. And I'll have to find proof. What are you looking for? Is this the frock coat you wore as Reverend Prospero when you held up Pine Valley? That doesn't prove a thing and you know it. If I stole anything, where is it? You're quite right. I'll need more than a costume as evidence. Well, you won't find anything more. Just what did you do with the money? Ship it back east so it'll be waiting for you when you get there? Go back east and find out. Why don't you give up, mister? You're not going to prove anything on me and there isn't going to be any way you'll be able to. Maybe there is a way, Faversham. What do you mean? You'll find out. Maybe I better read this list back to you just once more. Really, Mr. Hollister, you've read it back to me three times already. I assure you it's correct. I appreciate your thoroughness, but I really must be going. Goodbye. Reckon we gave you mass friend enough time at the hotel? Ah, if there be evidence there, me think he must have been find it by now. Darling, are you here? Come in here, I've something to tell you. The coach is due a few minutes past three. The payroll will be on it. Darling, why are you made up as Otello? Why not, Zortello? Really, do it, that voice. Don't you think you're overdoing it a bit? And what's wrong with my voice? It sounds like a foghorn. I know you like to show your versatility, dear, but there's such a thing as going too far. Besides, it's ridiculous to think of holding up the Wells Fargo office disguised as Otello and Desdemona. And what's ridiculous about it? My sweet, it's one thing to be a parson as you were in Pine Valley, or a Civil War veteran as you were in Cloverdale, but Otello, never. But darling, this costume is so roomy. Think of all the money it will hold. <laughs> Stop being silly, my sweet. The money will fit very nicely in the false bottom of the trunk with all the rest. Thanks for telling me where you keep it hidden, Mrs. Faversham. What? But who? The man with the mask. Oh, no. Where's my husband? He's tied up in the bedroom. Oh, I hate you. You spoiled everything. Won't work again. It's no use trying hysterics. But you don't understand. I'm not acting. These are real tears. Oh, where's my handkerchief? I have to tie you up, Mrs. Faversham. This is the end of the road for you and your husband. Not quite, mister. Put your hands up and turn around. It may be the end of the road for you, but not for us. I'm getting worried, Indian. That payroll money's due here any minute now. And your friend should have been back long ago. That's right. Me not like it. Maybe you ought to go to the hotel and see if anything's gone wrong. Ah, me be right back. Oh. Yes, Tano. You all right, Kimisabi? I was tricked by the oldest device in the world. A woman's tears. She had a derringer hidden in her handbag. How long I've been unconscious. Me not know, Kimisabi. It looked like them leaving in plenty big hurry. 
Yes, they took the evidence with them. It was hidden in the bottom of their theatrical trunk. Was Mr. Hollister alone at the Wells Fargo office? That's right, Kimisabe. Me get worried about you. Help me off with this disguise. And... Mr. Hollister! Mr. Hollister! What happened? They took me by surprise. Not five minutes after the payroll money arrived. They forced me to open the safe. They were in disguises? No. No, none at all. They had a buggy waiting outside with a big trunk in it. I saw it before they knocked me out. Go after them. Find them. I'll be all right. How you doing, Matilda? Ain't never been on such a bumpy road like this before, Hezekiah. Mighty rough on the bustle. Poor little Effie May. She's plum wore out. Wake up, Effie May. Say something nice to your grandpappy. That's a good girl. Now go back to sleep, you little knucklehead. Oh, no, no, now, Matilda, is that any way to treat our granddaughter, huh? 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 <laughs> <laughs> you look absurd. Isn't this a ridiculous way to be traveling? Oh, but a wonderful way to deceive anyone who follows us. A silly express agent will tell everyone we made our getaway in a buggy. I never dream we'd take time to put on this disguise and switch to a wagon, which is even slower. I hope you're right, but look up there. Well, well, our two old friends. Think they'll stop us? Of course they will. They'll want to know if we've seen a young man and a woman driving along this road in a buggy. Yes, but supposing they recognize us. Oh, darling. They've seen us as we really look, not as we are now, dressed as a couple of country bumpkins with a baby. Besides, we're actors, aren't we? If we can deceive a whole audience, we can surely deceive one masked man and an Indian. But just in case they get a little too inquisitive, my little friend here will be hidden in Effie May's blanket, ready to talk back to them. Look like Palmer's wagon. Let's find out if they've seen anything of two young actors trying to make a getaway in a buggy. Pull up on that wagon. They must be in the hole. Oh. Uh, now, look, mister, if, if you're aiming to rob us, we ain't got nothing or no value. Well, please don't be alarmed. We mean you no harm. Then why are you wearing that mask? Seems old law-abiding folk ain't safe on these roads no more. Hush up, Effie May. Your grandma won't let him touch you. I can assure you all we want to ask is a few questions. Well, we well, then go right ahead and ask. We, we ain't running to a soul for days and we plumb relish a little visit. Have you seen a man and a woman go by here recently? They'd be traveling rather fast in a buggy. They had a large trunk with them. Well, now that you mention it, uh, a couple did pass us a while back. They turned off the shortcut to the border. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right, Matilda. And, and come to think of it, they did have a drunk in that buggy they was driving. That sounds like them, Kimis, honey. Yes, they'd be wise to head for the border as fast as they can. Thanks for the information. Oh, oh Lavinia, you're a genius. <laughs> Not a genius, darling. Just a great actress. Well, <laughs> Why we stop, Kim is happy? Because the man and woman we're looking for aren't headed for the border. What do you mean? They're in that wagon we just left, Colonel. You sure of that? I've worn disguises long enough to recognize makeup when I see it. Then why we not take them prisoner when we stop them? Because that woman would have shot us if we'd have made a move. She had a gun hidden under that blanket. I had to go along with the act. Then how we take them? I think I know a way. Come on. <laughs> This way. Let's go.
that gun, Mr. Faversham. What? What are you talking about? One under your blanket. Stop putting on that axe. Very clever, mister. I apologize for having underestimated you. Pull up on those horses. Anything you say, mister. Get him, Dewey! Get him! Get him! Faberson. It may not pay as well, but it's a lot safer profession. Now, on your way. Do not try any more tricks. Yes, sir. Looks like it's all here, all right. The company's going to be mighty grateful that you got it back for him. Me tell Sheriff what happened, Kim Asabi. I'm on way over now. Good. Mr. Hollister, can we leave our prisoners with you? I'll keep this gun aimed right at until the sheriff gets here. I feel sorry for you two. Could have used your talents to do a lot of good instead of so much bad. Come on, Tuttle. The world is but a stage wherein every man must play a part. Mine is sad. Oh, don't be sad, darling. We may have failed as outlaws, but we're still good actors. Yeah. Think of all the great shows you two can do up at the prison for that captive audience. You're so right. You might almost say the masked man has done us a favor. By the way, who is he? He's a man who does lots of favors, but only for folks on the right side of the law. He's the Lone Ranger. Are you still there? 